Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to be looking at the solutions to the honors sound homework problems 11 through 15. Well, let's start with problem 11. A radio station broadcasts their signal with a wavelength of 3.5 micrometers. Although your radio will translate the signal into an audible sound, explain why you cannot hear the radio signal directly. Let's take a look and see what we have in this problem. We are given the wavelength of the radio signal, which is 3.5 micrometers. I do need to convert that to meters. So that is going to uh, convert to 3.5 times 10 to the minus six meters. I'm not specifying an air temperature or speed of the sound wave or an air temperature here. So we're going to assume that we have room temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius. And the speed of a sound wave at 20 degrees Celsius is going to be 343 meters per second. So I have the wavelength. I have the wave speed. I can use my wave speed formula to find the frequency. So the frequency is equal to the wave speed divided by the wavelength. So 343 meters per second divided by 3.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters will give me a frequency of 9.8 times 10 to the 7th hertz. And if you guys remember from the PowerPoint, we know that the threshold of human hearing goes from about 20 hertz at the low end to about 20,000 hertz at the higher end. So the frequency of the radio wave, which is about 98 million hertz, is much, much higher than our upper threshold for human hearing of 20,000 hertz. So it's much higher frequency than what our ears can detect. So you could listen to the radio, but you can't listen to the radio waves. Mind blown. Problem 12. Antennas are designed to be as long as the wavelengths they are intended to receive. An amateur radio operator sets up an antenna line in his backyard in order to receive a signal from across the country. What length should his antenna line be to receive a signal of 3.0 times 10 to the second Hertz. So my frequency is 3.0 times 10 to the second Hertz. Again, I'm not specifying an air temperature, so we're going to assume it's 20 degrees Celsius. And my um, wave speed for sound at 20 degrees Celsius is going to be 343 meters per second. So I know from my wave speed formula, if I want to solve for the wavelength, the wavelength is equal to the velocity of the wave divided by the frequency of the wave. So 343 meters per second divided by 3.0 times 10 to the second hertz will give me a wavelength of 1.1 meters. Problem 13. The fundamental tone of an open pipe resonator with a length of 48 centimeters is the same as the second harmonic tone of a closed pipe resonator. What is the length of the closed pipe resonator? So I have a pipe that is closed at one end with the fundamental frequency, and that frequency is the same as the second harmonic frequency in a closed pipe resonator. So my frequencies are going to be the same. What I'm looking for is the length of the closed pipe. So let's see what we're given here. I'm given the length of the open pipe, which is 48 centimeters. I know I need to convert that to a meter. So that's going to be 0 0.48 meters. The number of the harmonic for the open pipe, because it is the fundamental tone of the open pipe resonator in the fundamental tone my frequency is going to be or my harmonic for that is going to be one for the closed pipe i'm looking for the second harmonic tone but because it is a closed pipe i know in a closed pipe i only have odd numbered harmonics we got that from our powerpoint remember in a closed pipe we only have odd number harmonics we don't have any even numbered harmonics so the second harmonic tone in a closed pipe is going to give me the third harmonic so my value for the number of the harmonic for the closed pipe is actually going to be three because it's the odd number or the second odd number and we are looking for the length of the closed pipe now, I know that for the 
frequency for the open pipe is going to equal the number of the open pipe times the velocity divided by two times the length of my open pipe. And for my closed pipe, so the third harmonic on my closed pipe is going to equal the number of the harmonic times the velocity divided by four times the length of the closed pipe. These, by the way, are the two formulas that you're going to really need to know for the test, so make sure that you are familiar with them. Now, I am told that the fundamental frequency on the open pipe is going to be equal to the third harmonic on the closed pipe. So because those two things are equal to each other, I can then set these two things equal to each other. And when I do that and I solve for the length of the closed pipe, I'm going to have the, the length of the closed pipe is going to equal six times the length of the open pipe divided by four. So now I just plug in the length of my open pipe into that equation, and that will give me a length for the open pipe of 0 0.72 meters. Problem number 14. An open tube is filled with water, which is slowly drained as a tuning fork of uh, frequency 1000 hertz is held over the open end. As the water drains, the level of water is marked as a maximum of sound is heard in the tube. These maxima are detected at distances of 16.7 centimeters, 25.05 centimeters, and 33.4 centimeters, measured from the open end of the tube. What is the speed of sound in the air within the tube? Uh, this problem is actually um, from a lab that we were supposed to do if we were actually in school. You guys don't get to do that lab. It was a fun one, um, and it's kind of a bummer you don't get to do it. But let's take a look at the problem anyways. So our frequency for this problem is 1,000 hertz. The length at the first maximum of sound is 16.7 centimeters and these maximums of sound are where my harmonic frequencies are and as you um, as you increase the length of the air within the column as the water drains you're going to hear the sound wave increase in intensity at certain points where those sound waves increase in intensity is where you have your harmonic frequencies so these lengths are going to tell us where the harmonic frequencies are located so my fundamental harmonic is going to be at 16.7 centimeters for my third harmonic that's going to be at 25.05 centimeters and again it's my third harmonic because this is a tube that is closed at one end one end of the tube is open to to the air but the other end of the tube has water in it so it's a, a tube that is closed at one end and in a closed tube or tube that is closed at one end we only have odd numbered harmonics so we go one three five seven etc so my second maximum that's actually my third harmonic which is 25.05 centimeters at the next maximum, which would be my next odd number, or the fifth harmonic, that's at 33.4 centimeters. And we are looking for the speed of the sound wave. So I know that I have points of resonance every 8.35 centimeters. The distance between 16.7 and 25.05 is 8.35. And the distance between 25.05 and 33.4, again, is 8.35 centimeters. So my fundamental frequencies are occurring, or my harmonics are occurring every 8.35 centimeters. Now I know that my wavelength on a closed pipe is going to equal four times the length of the pipe that is from the powerpoint so four times my length of the pipe in meters is going to be 0 0.334 meters that is the length of one wavelength now to find the wave speed because i have my frequency of a thousand hertz i now know the wavelength is 0 0.334 meters i multiply those two together 
and that will give me a wave speed of 334 meters per second. Problem 15. In music, the middle C has a frequency of 256 hertz. What frequency is a note that is exactly one octave higher than middle C? So the frequency of my middle C note is 256 hertz, and I want to know what the frequency is of a note that is one octave higher than that. Now you probably had to look up what an octave is. That's okay. That's what Google is for. And we know that an octave has a frequency ratio of 1 to 2. So the next highest octave has to be twice that of the first frequency or my middle C note. So I just have to take my middle C note, multiply that by 2 to find the next frequency of the next, the frequency of the next octave. And 2 times 256 hertz is going to give me a frequency of 512 hertz to go up one octave.